So we're about 24 days away from the official start of hurricane season. But of course, that doesn't always mean that we won't see any early action. Let's bring in a expert, an expert, LSU professor and hurricane climatologist, Jill Trippinier joins me now. Thanks a lot for the time. I really appreciate it. So I want to get into the upcoming hurricane season in just a minute, but let's start with what I was just talking about. And look, I know anytime there's some kind of broad area of low pressure, everybody online starts to go nuts. I'm seeing people posting some runs of the GFS model, which is actually trying to spin up a couple of storms, but that's an outlier. What are your thoughts on what we're seeing? I think it's pretty early in the season for us to expect something to actually form and really solidify and turn into something that we need to be concerned about. There is a lot of warm water that exists throughout the Gulf and the Caribbean. So if there is a storm, it will have the energy that it needs. But there's a big chance that interacting with land and the Yucatan and even frontal systems that are still pushing their way from the north will likely keep it from turning into anything that we need to be worried about at this point. So you were talking about the sea surface temperatures here. And, you know, I'm just curious how how much this is going to play into how this season pans out because they are above average right now right but not as above average as they were last year and I know we had a super active season last year it got going kind of during the second half of the season uh, you know what are your thoughts on how this plays into the forecast yeah, I mean, sea surface temperature throughout that main development region is a little bit cooler than what we saw last year. A lot of that has to do with the Bermuda High and trade winds really pushing the warm ocean water to the west and leaving upwelling from colder ocean water on the eastern side. That's great for the think for thinking of development that exists all the way over near Africa. A little less helpful thinking about that that might form throughout the Gulf or throughout the Caribbean because that warm water that would normally sit over the main development region is being pushed closer to mainland and that's something that we want to be mindful of but yes. i do think the cooler, the cooler ocean temperatures will help a bit on the on the eastern side uh, so another interesting thing that we have in the forecast is it, it appears that this is going to end up as an enso neutral year and correct me if i'm wrong on any of this but um looking at some of the analogs it looks like 2017 was one that kind of stuck out stuck out to me and when i say analogs for the viewers you take some of the atmospheric conditions that we're seeing from this year and you compare it to previous seasons where we had similar atmospheric conditions. Doesn't always mean it's going to pan out exactly the same, but, you know, 2017, obviously a very big year. Harvey, Maria, Irma. Do you think there's any correlation? I think correlation is a strong word. There is this idea that if you have a neutral ENSO, you don't have any influencing factors that are going to really inhibit growth like an El Nino year or really promote growth like a La Nina year. But the neutral effectively means that things are, are just kind of, well, regular, kind of normal. And with that in mind, we can get really extreme events that happen in, in those years, even when the setup isn't exactly prime time. So I think it's important to keep uh, an eye out, especially for those storms that form really close to a coastline because they will have the energy available and it, it won't necessarily matter whether El Nino or La Nina is in effect. Yeah, and, and the interesting thing about that, of course, early in the season, we tend to see storms forming a little bit closer to home. And if there's one spot where the water temperature is a little bit warmer than the rest of the Atlantic Basin, it appears to be the Gulf right now. So uh, again, we'll, we'll see how that plays into everything this year. Let me ask you about Saharan dust real quick. So Early in the season, it's pretty typical to see a lot of Saharan dust out in the main development region west of Africa. Um, what are models telling us right now about how the early season looks with, uh, with the dust situation? That's a great question. I'm seeing a little bit of disagreement out there and whether or not it's going to be more or less than what's in 2024 and what we saw. But I think what's important to realize is because those winds, the same winds that are pulling that warm ocean water to the west are going to be the same winds that impact the Sahara and pull that dust to the west as well. And if we do have dust present, it's likely to inhibit some formation of tropical cyclones and hurricanes in that space because it dries out the air and hurricanes require moisture to be present in order to intensify so we'll certainly keep an eye on it all right great stuff uh running out of time here we gotta go but thank you so much for your insight i always enjoy learning something you know within my own field when i feel like i know a lot but i'm like oh never mind uh there's people that know a lot more than me i appreciate it uh that's lsu professor and hurricane climatologist jill trepanier